2014 was another big year in Formula One. Ugly, only a mother could love noses were introduced on a number of cars and come to the end of the year, a staggering six drivers drove their last Grand Prix, including one who tragically paid the ultimate price. Max Chilton sadly failed to prove he could be the next Lewis Hamilton, but he never stood a chance, really. A decent junior career, culminating with fourth overall in the GP2 standings, allowed him to make the step up to Formula One with the Marussia F1 team for 2013. However, as you can probably guess, the lack of competitiveness from the team and Max saw him outscored and beaten by his teammate. He did achieve the record of most Grand Prix competed without retiring. This was as good as it got for Chilton and he left the team and Formula One entirely in 2014. A step down to Indy Lights in America before a step up to the IndyCar series is where you can now find Chilton competing. His best result in five years has been fourth at the Indy 500 in 2017. Perhaps one of the saddest stories in F1's recent history is the loss of the talented Frenchman Jules Bianchi. A talented youngster, he was one of the first of Ferrari's young drivers, and after a strong junior career and a year as a reserve driver for Force India, he stepped up finally as a race driver with Marussia in 2013. A brilliant debut year, consistently beating his teammate in qualifying and the race, but lacking any points to show for it, he continued on with Marussia in 2014. It wasn't until Monaco that Marussia and Bianchi scored their first ever World Championship points by finishing ninth, despite lacking outright pace. A huge day for the Frenchman, who many were touting to be the next big thing in Formula 1 and ready to race should he be needed for Ferrari. A horrific crash at the 2014 Japanese Grand Prix saw Bianchi sustain severe head injuries and nine months later succumbed to those, marking the first death of a driver as a result of a Formula 1 race since Ayrton Senna in 1994. Without a doubt, Bianchi was poised to become a Ferrari driver, something his godson and now Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc acknowledges and registers with a helmet tribute. Bianchi's car number 17 was retired from use in Formula One to honour the Frenchman's passing. The talented German Adrian Sutil raced mainly in the midfield pack for the duration of his Formula One career between 2007 and 2014 driving for various incarnations of the same team, Midland, Spiker, Force India, before finishing off his career with a switch to Sauber. Lewis Hamilton's former best friend didn't enjoy quite the same success, but proved a solid point scorer. He achieved his best finish in 2011 with ninth overall in the standings, while his best race result remains a fourth place in Italy in 2009 after qualifying second. In 2011, after an incident with the Lotus Renault F1 team owner Eric Lux, Sutil was sentenced and charged with assault, occasioning grievous bodily harm. The fallout with Hamilton came after the Brit cancelled his appearance as a defence witness. He subsequently lost his seat at Force India in 2012. He made a miraculous return to the team in 2013, though, leading a number of laps at the opening race in Australia. A strong season followed, which saw him switch to Sauber for 2014. A poor performing car and several mistakes ensured this was Sutil's final season racing before he dropped out of Formula 1. A last minute call up as a reserve driver for Williams in 2015 was his last shot in F1 before he faded into the background completely. It's unclear what Sutil gets up to these days, with the latest news from the German being he crashed his McLaren Senna LM worth $1.6 million into a lamppost in Monaco. He was unhurt. A victim of the Red Bull Young Driver program, Jean-Éric Verne went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Daniel Ricciardo at Toro Rosso when he first joined the grid in 2012. A tight battle with his Australian teammate ultimately winning out and securing a promotion to the top team. Verne then went up against young rookie Daniel Kvyat and after a tough first half of the season, ended up equaling his best result in Formula 1 with a 6th place finish in Singapore on his way to 13th overall in the standings. However, a victim of Red Bull looking younger and younger, he was replaced by Max Verstappen at the end of the year. A year testing with the Ferrari team beckoned before a switch to Formula E, where he secured pole position in his debut race for Andretti. He moved to the DS Virgin Racing team for the 2015-16 season before joining Tachita, where he has enjoyed huge success, amassing nine wins so far on his way to back-to-back -back drivers' championships in Season 4 and 5 of FE. He has also balanced his Formula E drive with racing in sports cars in the WEC, competing at Le Mans every year since 2017, with the best result of fifth. You know when you've been KK'd, Kamui Kobayashi is right up there with one of the best, or at least the most exciting, especially from Japan. 
After testing for Toyota, he impressed enough to be promoted to race driver for the final two races, scoring his first points at the season finale in 2009. He was expected to get a full-time race seat with the team the following year, but with Toyota leaving the sport, he would join Sauber. His best season came in 2012. With an ultra-competitive Sauber car, Kobayashi scored a memorable third place at his home Grand Prix in Suzuka. Sadly, he was outpaced and outperformed by teammate Sergio Perez, which meant the Japanese ace was left without a drive for 2013. Having spent a year in sports cars, Kobayashi returned to the F1 grid with Caterham. You can guess how the next bit goes. With a woefully uncompetitive car, Kobayashi failed to score any points, with the team ultimately going into administration before the end of the year. Since Kobayashi has competed in the ultra-competitive Japanese Formula 1 Super Formula, as well as working as a Toyota factory driver, racing for the LMP1 class in the World Endurance Championship and is currently second in the 2020 World Championship standings. Last but not least for the chopping block in 2014 is André Lotterer, who competed in a one-off race for Caterham at the Belgian Grand Prix. His only previous F1 experience was in 2002 as a Jaguar reserve, but in 2014 he was called up to replace Kobayashi. He outqualified teammate Marcus Ericsson, but retired after one lap. Since his one-off F1 appearance, Lotterer has made and was already making a name for himself in the sports car world, competing as a world champion and two-time Le Mans winner with Audi in the WEC. He is also a Super GT and Super Formula ace, having dominated the championships between 2003 and 2017. He now balances his time between the WEC and Formula E, racing for Tachita and now Porsche, having so far appeared on the podium six times in the All-Electric Championship. Stay tuned for part six where we take a look at those drivers who departed F1 following the 2015 season. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and do leave a comment in the section below. Thanks for watching.